This YouTube series will cover material that we cover in our Introduction to Astronomy class from a meteorite found in Antarctica from the planet Mars and the search for life, all the way through to supernovas and black holes. When we look around at the rest of the stars around us, we very quickly recognize that stars come in various brightnesses and colors that correspond to different temperatures and perhaps have something to do with their size or their mass. The first thing we say to ourselves is, what's the range of brightnesses of stars? But when we look out at the sky, all we can tell by looking up at the sky is a star's apparent brightness. How bright it appears from our perspective. Now, does that have something to do with the star's real brightness? You bet. But in order to figure out what a star's real brightness is, we need to combine what we know about its apparent brightness with its distance. If we knew the star's distance, we could take the apparent brightness, combine it with the distance, and figure out the star's real brightness. So the question then is, how do we measure the distance to stars? And there is a technique which we make use of, which allows us to measure the distance to stars in the same way that our eyes measure the distance to someone's hand as it reaches towards us. That's called parallax. Human beings have two eyes set apart from each other. So as something comes towards us, if you alternate your eyes, you will notice that your finger appears to move more when it's close and less when it's further away. Your eyes are taking pictures as a baseball or a hand or something's coming towards with you, and that recognition of that amount of parallax gives us a sense for the distance. Objects that are far away have little parallax. Objects that are close in have more. We can do the same thing with the stars. Rather than using our eyes, we use telescopes. Two telescopes aimed up at the sky, taking a picture from one angle or another, allowing us to see the stars that are closer moving more and the stars that are further away moving less. This technique, called parallax, allows us to measure the distance to approximately 2.5 million stars. 2.5 million stars out to a distance of approximately 500 light years. Or, to use another term that we use rarely in astronomy, but another unit is a unit called parsecs. This is about 150 parsecs, or 500 light years. A parsec being about 3.26 light years. Either way, there are 2.5 million stars within 500 light years of the Earth. By combining our understanding of their apparent brightness with their distance, we can tell their real brightness. So as I move over to this side, what I'd like to do next is to talk briefly about how we measure the brightness of stars. So we set up a scale. So as I move over here, you can see that there's a scale that we need. You can't just go out in the sky and say, well, that star is bright, and that star is dim, and that star is sort of bright. We need a scale. Just like when someone asks you what the temperature is, you use Fahrenheit or Celsius to describe that. The scale we will use is called apparent magnitude. The apparent magnitude scale allows us to quantify how bright a star appears in the sky. So, the apparent magnitude scale ranks things like the sun, which has a magnitude of minus 26.7, the brightest thing in the sky. The moon, minus 12.6. Luna, the full moon. Venus, minus 4.4. Notice something about the apparent magnitude scale. As things get dimmer, the numbers get larger. In fact, stars run anywhere from a magnitude of about minus one all the way down to 
what you can see with your eye is about a five. So that's about the limit you can see with your eye, the dimmest stars. These are the brightest stars you can see in the sky, have about a minus one. The point is, the scale is used to quantify the brightness of objects. In fact, every one magnitude difference is 2.5 times dimmer. So one magnitude, if we go from a magnitude one star to a magnitude two star, it is 2.5 times dimmer. What if we went from a magnitude one to a magnitude three star? It's not 2.5 plus 2.5, it's 2.5 times 2.5. So the magnitude scale is multiplicative. A difference of five magnitudes represents 2.5 to the fifth times dimmer or brighter, depending on whether you're moving up or down the scale. So if we can measure a star's apparent brightness using apparent magnitude, we can measure its distance using parallax, Put those two things together and we get a sense for how bright a star really is. To do that, we use what's called the absolute magnitude scale. The absolute magnitude of a star is its apparent magnitude adjusted for distance so that everybody's on a level playing field. So if you know the distance to an object, you can adjust to what you see. So what we say here is that the absolute magnitude is every star placed at a set distance. That distance is 10 parsecs. If you remember, one parsec is 3.26 light years, so everybody is assumed to be at 32.6 light years, 10 parsecs. Move everyone to that distance, assign a number, and you've got the absolute magnitude. To be fair to all the stars, we take the stars that are far away and dim and move them up, the stars that are close in and maybe over bright and move them back. But once we adjust for distance and set all the stars at 10 parsecs, we have ourselves the absolute magnitude. And that is a precise way to measure a star's real brightness. Absolute magnitude. What we will do next is combine that with a little bit more information we know. How do we measure the temperature of stars? How do we measure the mass of stars? And put that all together to see if there's any sort of connection between those variables as we study how a star lives and dies.